think I would like to start my first sentence is saying that we are talking about children who are in street situations. So we are talking about a diversity of situations where children start disconnecting from families and communities, have experiences of life and all kinds of violations of rights and violence on the streets, move to child protection institutions, go back to home. We're talking about a large number of children who are very vulnerable and very exposed to violence and violation of rights in our countries. So I start saying greetings from Brazil, some sad memories and some rays of light. Sadly, Brazil is where street children, the street children issue first gained attention on the world stage. I recall 1980, carrying out the first study on street children in Rio de Janeiro. Sitting on the street corners with a small tape recorder in our hands and recording the voices of 300 kids. Why did we do that? The kids at that point started becoming visible on the streets of Rio, walking together in groups to protect themselves. They were arrested by the police, accused of disturbing the peace and provoking violence. The term street children was not yet in use. In the past 20 years, Brazil experienced a growing sense of insecurity and violence, and street children were often blamed. It is still the case. Then on July 23, 1993, Eight children were shot down by policemen on the steps of the church of Candelaria in downtown Rio de Janeiro. It had been estimated that 62 street children survived the massacre. And in the next few months, 39 of them were either killed by police or by elements of street life. I'm just recalling this event because it's a scar with a lot of pain that we still carry for not having been able to completely eradicate this problem in our country. And so Brazil became known as a country that kills its, its children. On a more promising note, Brazil also became known as producing some very creative ways of addressing the problem with exemplary street education work inspired by Paulo Freire's teaching of deep respect for the children and youth their life histories and their voices. But a few years after the Candelaria massacre, the issue became less present as a, prior a priority in the national political agenda. Only very recently, in the past few months, have key government ministries started to debate new policies. The problem continues to be a challenging one in my country, and we badly, badly need international pressure, not only to shape better policies, but to press for their implementation and make the right of all children a national priority. So, the street is not the only setting these children are, but the streets are where they become visible and they stop being seen as a child to become a problem. I have three points to make. How would the general comments be most useful in Brazil and Latin America? Policy experiences, successes and challenges, and transferring of lessons learned. The first point, how gen a general comment would be useful, the situation of street children not improving. Strong law and order forces, especially in face of the mega events, the World Cup coming up in a couple of weeks, <coughs> and taking law and order approach, so pick them up and dump them. Governments ignoring the rights of street children or children who are very vulnerable in, on the move from the home communities to the streets. Street children vulnerable to many harms, including physical pun 
punishment, even tortured by a police. We just held two weeks ago a public hearing in Rio de Janeiro with several politicians involved in the municipality of Rio trying to call attention to a, national, a municipal new policy that we have in Rio not being implemented. And in this hearing, we had street educators denounce the fact that police, the policemen have developed a new cruel form of torturing these children. They basically set fire on plastic bags and those drops of plastic bags on their feet so they cannot walk and run. This did not happen to one child but to several of them. And in some ways, we have new forms of torture and, and cruelty imposed on these children that we were not aware of up to a few months ago. And because of the need, they say, to set order, as we expect a lot of international attention in Rio de Janeiro, we have had, have had practices of, of cleaning the streets and disappearing with kids. We thought we had overcome this problem. A general comment would allow advocates to point to international standards that prescribe a different approach to these children and standards that are tied to treaty obligations of the Convention. In Rio, the federally mandated Children's Rights Council has adopted a fresh policy in line with the human rights standards of the Convention, but which is ignored by the city political leadership. The existence of the policy, however, facilitates the building of a coalition for change. In the same way, a general comment would facilitate advocacy for implementing the policy. At this moment, we have a, a national coalition, Manuel is here representing, working very hard to, uh, to elaborate a national policy. We have interministerial involvement, we have many hundreds of NGOs involved, so we are in a very good moment in that sense. Experience in Rio of building and then assisting a coalition to successfully press the adoption of the first policy on street children passed through the Children's Rights Council is a very important experience that, um, and successful one in a very visible and difficult city as Rio de Janeiro. Experiencing of building a new coalition to press for the implementation of that policy is another aspect of a success. Elements of, the, of new policies will include, we, we are working for that, preservation of rights from police and other violence, the right to walk freely on the street and not be harassed by police, educational and health assistance, help reconnecting with family, friends, and community. Such reconnecting in several countries' experience involves, in the first place, the presence of a concerned adult, such as a street educator, and then a connection to small communities, such a shelter, a group home, or the forms of protecting children. When, and then, if the young person is ready, specific help to lead the street. We are talking mostly about connecting and reconnecting because the, the center of this problem is that children start disconnecting from family and community settings or the possible protective environments for these children. So reconnecting them and maintaining their connection to concerned adults is a very important part of this issue and affects a large number of children in our countries. And at last, Transferring lessons learned, a general comment should take advantage of current experience of helping these children in the several countries. While contexts and situations are different among countries, there are some similarities in the condition of street children and ways to help them among other countries. A general comment would help raise consciousness and demonstrate means of intervention, both of which are important for countries where the problem has been present for many years and for those where it is newly emerging. As you know, this is happening 
Um, last year, I was working on a, on a project with the Chinese colleagues. They have an estimated number of a million <coughs> children coming from the rural areas to the cities. They are completely lost as what to do. So, we need to put pressure on our countries. We are here because we need to. We are here because we need to find other strategies so our governments will feel the pressure not to create new policies, but to implement what we have already passed. There are good laws, there are interesting policies, and a disregard for implementing them. We are here because we do need the power other partners have to help us put pressure on our government.